Thanks for tuning in and welcome to this week's review of Live Free or Die Hard starring Bruce Willis. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to this week's review of Mr. Woodcock. Thanks for tuning in and welcome to this week's review of Rambo, starring Sylvester Stallone. When I think of classic YouTube, I think of Mr. Black's movie reviews. From 2007 to 2010, Mr. Black was the most viewed, subscribed, and liked film critic on the entire site. If you've seen the trailer for this movie, you know this is one of those films where anything is possible. If they show you an image of a bullet curving or two bullets hitting each other, then it's pretty safe to say that this is a movie we have to totally suspend reality in order to enjoy it. So this means it all comes down to the execution of the scenes and the actors have to work twice as hard to pull this kind of a movie off. This period is also one of the most outstanding in terms of big movie hits. Much like the 80s, this period is marked by some truly classic flicks and Mr. Black got to review damn near every one of them. Every week, another modern classic would spoil us. Hit after hit, pop culture moment after moment. But more than that, you had the legit greatest era of YouTube, which will not be surpassed until this site is given back to the tubers. It was a time of community. People really made conversations. And yes, of course, there was a lot of trolling. But it was a very different era, mainly because we controlled YouTube back then, not some stupid algorithm. Once upon a time, your views were determined by the number of subscribers, the ratings, and the comments you got. It was a glorious time. Anyone who worked well and with consistency would see success in their fields. It was a time when the big channels and little channels could thrive in harmony. It was also a time when you could make lasting friendships and discover your own tribe. If you were not around for the original YouTube, what you experience today is not even a pale imitation of what YouTube once was. Today, YouTube is not about you. It's about them. Corporate controlled channels algorithms pushing content we have no interest in, and the overall destruction of independent creative content that once made this site the most unique and thriving platform for artists, by artists. Mr. Black is the kind of YouTube success story that has been swept under the rug, because the way Mr. Black rose to become the top movie critic on YouTube cannot happen today, and most of all, Mr. Black is one of the few people who use their fame, power, and status here to try and make a real impact. And so begins our YouTube history lesson. Back in the glory days of 2007, you could become the most famous and celebrated critic on YouTube by simply putting in quality work consistently and understanding your audience. Mr. Black had a simple format. Every Friday afternoon, he would review the hottest new release, and by delivering short form reviews lasting around three to seven minutes, with high quality audio, professional level writing, and editing work that was above most YouTube standards at the time, Mr. Black carved out not only a niche, but he was bigger in his era than Ypert and Roper. All the net kids knew about Mr. Black. He drinks. Cocktail casual. Oh. Oh. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Ah. The fuck? You would have loved it. So, Seth, you're coming to my party tonight, right? Yeah, why? Should I not come? Can you get us booze? Yeah, I can. Oh, that would be awesome. Plus, you know, you scratch our backs, we'll scratch yours. Well, the funny thing about my back is, is that it's located on my cock. 
So you do want alcohol? You want some sort of alcohol? Get my brand new fake ID. Wait, you changed your name to McLovin? Doesn't even have a first name. It just says McLovin. This guy's either gonna think here's another kid with a fake ID, or here's McLovin, the 25-year-old Hawaiian organ donor. I am McLovin. <laughs> I must say, when I first saw the trailer for the movie Superbad, I didn't really have high hopes for this movie. And I thought it'd be good for a couple of cheap laughs, but I didn't think it'd be anything exceptional. Well, it is nice to say once again that another movie this year far exceeds this trailer. This movie has a great intro and does a good job of starting strong and finishing strong as well. I will give one word of warning before I start my review. This movie does push the envelope like something about Mary in American Pie. I think we all remember the infamous hair gel scene in Something About Mary, as well as the Pie Eleven scene in American Pie. This movie is along those lines of humor, so I don't recommend you bring the kitties along with you unless you're in a big hurry to have the talk with them right after the credits roll. And I also wouldn't recommend this for a first date either, so don't say you weren't warned. The humor is pretty crude at points, but it's also pretty damn funny. Sometimes I think we miss three to four lines of dialogue because everyone was laughing so hard. There are some scenes that are legendary like the 8% of boys do this and the bump and grind Jonah has with the girl at the party, as well as the home economics and liquor store scenes, and these are up there with some of the great gags in movies. All the scenes with the cops were brilliant. Seth Rogen and Bill Hadler were great, and the lecture about meeting girls in bars or meeting anyone in bars is so true. One thing this movie did so well was casting actors that look young enough to be believable. The best part about his reviews was even on a film like Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, which he did not like, and gave one and a half stars too. There would be no bashing, ripping, or any attempt to tear the film apart. He listed valid reasons for his experience and never came off like a harpy. Even more than that, his negative reviews never seemed to be made with the intention of trying to destroy the thing that he didn't like which allowed a viewer to understand his opinion, learn from them, and not be controlled by them. Today, if a review is negative, it's not just stating that person's experience and offering a valid opinion. It's designed to try and suggest that opinion is the only valid one, and that your experience will be the same as the critics. Back in the day, reviews were like recommendations, not commendations or condemnations, as a matter of fact. Mr. Black had a great voice, understood the nature of cinema, and really had a passion for it, which made every review entertaining and informative. All it took was consistent, quality effort on his part, and before 2007 was over, Mr. Black had become one of the biggest YouTubers of his era. But his fame would be short-lived, and his legacy would nearly be erased by the site which made him famous. The year is 2009, and Mr. Black has now stepped away from his primary channel, Mr. Black's Movie Reviews, to focus on a new venture, The Real Weekly News. What would follow would be an epic battle in the vein of David versus Goliath, but unlike that biblical tale, this tubular one, would not have the same victorious ending. See, all the issues that plague YouTube today, they got started in 2009. Really, before that likely. But you can trace YouTube's descent into a hollow corporate shell starting right here. Now, it used to be in plain sight, is now invisible, unless you mouse over the More tab. Now, this is the second time they've done this. Also, notice how the rating system has been almost completely removed from YouTube. This will be the equivalent of removing the feedback from eBay. Now, when you go to the popular or most viewed pages, there's no rating showing at all. And this is to prevent blatant corporate commercials for being one star to death and ignored by the YouTube community. More importantly, notice how the most viewed page is no longer the default page when you open YouTube when you're logged in. Now the default tab is the one called Popular. This is another way of promoting partners and copyright infringing videos, as shown here in this screenshot. This process filters the majority of views to partners, helping build them into mega channels like Fred. This channel is like a mock arena of YouTube, except it won't go away. And that's why this channel grew so fast and why yours does not. Now if you're on the front page of YouTube almost nonstop, your channel will grow like this too unless you actually believe it grew to this size because of sheer talent. 
Also YouTube has hindered the bulletins feature and they've messed the view counters as well and it's crippled the views of the smaller channels, yet the large ones seem to be completely unaffected by these changes. I know smaller partners on YouTube whose revenue has gone down dramatically since these changes took place. Now we come to these new changes that are happening this week. It got leaked to the public that YouTube will now be cutting the original site down from its normal size to only 25% of what it is now. So in essence this will do to the YouTube section of the site what they've already done to the top rated category. Your total views will be cut in half if not more. So what does this mean? Well the first tab will now be movies, the next tab will be TV shows, and the third tab will be music, and the final and last tab will be videos. That videos tab will represent the entire YouTube website as we know it. So that means that all of YouTube will be stuck in that last tab as an afterthought, just like top rated was as a category. So why is this being done? It's because they're bringing on the big boys like Disney. Companies like Disney want all the traffic pointing towards them, and that's increasing their revenue at your expense. They have television networks, TV shows, and theme parks, but that is not enough. These companies want to dominate YouTube as well, one of the few places that a small independent channel could make their own market. So how will this affect you? It will utterly destroy your visibility on this website and make you almost non-existent. And if you follow the rate at which YouTube has been slowing down the growth of independent channels while promoting their mega partners, it won't be long before we go from this to this. They appear to want you off this website as a creator and they seem to only want you here as a consumer. And that is why they still haven't fixed the DMCA problems here on YouTube. It's been over seven months since this video was made and nothing has been changed yet to my knowledge. In the last 12 to 18 months, YouTube has made change after change to reduce the independent channel's exposure here on YouTube. And now with this next step, it will almost be complete. So what do we do about it? First, we need to come together and demand that this site remains like it has been with a few exceptions. If they want to add movies, TV shows, and music to YouTube, they need to be additions and not take priority over the entire YouTube website. Second, we want the ratings visible again so we know what's crap and what's worth watching. Third, we want the old successful format back where the top rated most discussed and top favorites are visible again like this. Fourth, we want you to drop the popular and rising pages from this website because they are worthless pages that you manipulate to grow channels like Fred. 2007 to 2009 was a time of gaming reviews, DVD updates, and all kinds of different, wacky, boring, and interesting content coming from everywhere. We all got to vote on it, and decide who we wanted to watch and whose efforts should be rewarded. While well, we bullied each other a bit, there was also no better time to be on the net. Because we had real conversations, we truly got involved in the community by responding with our own videos and having epic dialogues in the comments. While that may seem familiar today, the way it works is nowhere near the same. Back then, a video would get popular because we watched them, liked them, and shared them. Now we all know the algorithm controls everything, and it has nothing to do with effort, quality, or even entertainment value. It's all about the content that the big channels want to push on us, or the content they want hidden from us. Mr. Black went from discussing films to discussing real-world news stories, and attempting to also fight the destruction of the YouTube system. Some of his videos, such as one covering the topic of America leaving the gold standard behind, were featured on Yahoo's news page, due to the overwhelming views the video had. During this time, the Real Weekly News covered the stories the news media had begun to ignore, dealt with Viacom's transgressions against YouTubers, covered the potential HuluTube merger, and fought YouTube's constant flagging and censorship issues. Yes. Over a decade ago, Mr. Black was fighting the good fight that we all put up with as a part of our daily YouTube struggle. In fact, <clears throat> Mr. Black warned us that the corporations would throttle our views and eventually push us off the site. What they did in the end was basically worse. We little people are still here, but we all know that we are not seen because the search engine hides our work. Our reviews are no longer dictated by the quality of our work, or by the adoration of fans, or even by how much we can entertain you. Our reviews are dictated by how much we pay to be seen, 
and even with paying for more exposure, it never results in the same engagement that I used to see every day on the old YouTube. Everyone who worked hard on their channel once upon a time could see true success, not just views, but comments, engagement, and community. This was not just great for creators, but for viewers as well. We all got to make and watch the content we loved, and that meant we were entertained for hours on end. YouTube was once a place that you could lose hours to with glee not just sit there numb, scrolling, hoping desperately to find something to pass the time. Eventually, after some truly impressive work was done on The Real Weekly News, he was gone. Mr. Black vanished, and eventually had both channels suspended and removed, which leaves us with a very murky history of one of YouTube's biggest and most OG tubers. 2010 is the last year that Mr. Black or the Real Le <clears throat> Weekly News would be seen, until a recent archivist uploaded and preserved a great deal of Mr. Black's movie reviews and the Real Weekly News. Now, you can see some of this content again, but we have lost the data on subscriber counts, views, and comments, so if you were not there, likely you may not believe that this dude was, at one time the most famous critic on the internet. He then transitioned to talking about politics in a way that frankly educated a lot of young geeks like me because of him and access to a site filled with discussions and conversation. My political mind was opened at a much earlier age. He encouraged me to research and discover things on my own as well. He was really wonderful about insisting that his viewers did not agree with him but that we all simply learned from and understood each other. His movie reviews are why I started reviewing movies on YouTube as a kid, and I gladly followed in his footsteps regarding discussing politics after starting in pop culture. In my last video, I asked you all one simple but important question. Do you want change? I ask you only to put the words yes or no depending on how you felt. Well, the votes are in and to no surprise, roughly 83% said yes and 16% said no. And about 1% said they couldn't answer the question because it was too vague. Now for the people who said yes, that you do want change, this just happens to be where I personally fit in on this poll. Now for the people who said no, I may not feel the same way as you, but I do respect your answer, and I'm not trying to make you feel like your answer is incorrect in any way. Also I really wish I felt the same way as you do about the world today and the direction that we're headed. Now for the 1% or so of the people that couldn't answer the question because of the fact that it wasn't specific enough to answer correctly, I can respect that position as well. Now some people probably think that the whole point of this video was to show that 83% of the people who watched the video wanted change. That I wanted to prove something like more people want change than those that do not. That was not the point of the video. I think at this stage in the game with the recession slash depression, the ongoing war in Iraq that we're not getting out of anytime soon, the deployment of another 17,000 soldiers to Afghanistan gearing up for another potential conflict there, and the wonderful stimulus package that virtually destroyed the stock market the minute it was passed by the president, and on and on. And there's just too many things to list in this short video. But most people can agree that things are pretty bad right now and it could get a lot worse. So what was the whole point of my video change? So what was the right answer? And what was the wrong answer? Well the truth is, there was no wrong answer. The only wrong answer was no vote at all. The point was to show how many people who just don't give a damn. It didn't matter if you wanted change. What mattered is that you spoke up and said with some conviction what was on your mind. And since there are 4,900 total views of the video in 48 hours and only about 2,200 comments, about 55% of the people were just too damn lazy to even type in three letters in the comment section, yes or no. This video is a show that even though roughly 83% of the people, when asked if they wanted change, did want it, that they couldn't be bothered to do the very minimum to speak up and state their opinion. Yes, no, or even I can't answer because there wasn't enough information. 
everyone is given the opportunity to speak out every day. They complain all the time, yet they never lift a finger to do something about it. So for all you watching this video who didn't participate, you have two choices. You either get pissed off at me and call me names and defend your apathy, or you can simply take this message for what it's worth and see the whole point of this video. I'm not trying to make fools out of anyone that watches my videos. I get no joy in something like that. But what we do need is your help to speak up for our rights and our freedoms. We need you, and I mean we need all of you. If you're subscribed to this channel, you know this is not an entertaining channel. I find no humor in what's happening right now. War, famine, sickness, depression, torture, execution, brutality, corruption, I can go on and on. But I can't joke about these types of things. This channel has one purpose and one purpose only. To speak about things of importance. Things that will most likely affect you or someone you care about. This exercise was literally the least you could do to vote. You didn't have to leave your home, you didn't have to stand in line, you didn't have to go out of your way. You are right here at your computer. And all you had to do was literally take two seconds to vote. And that's why I turned off the ratings. I want to keep this exercise as simple as possible. Some of my videos can take weeks to make, not to mention that I need to make them in a particular order like all the Viacom videos to try and make the right impact. That project took me two months to complete and it failed miserably. Nothing changed. We didn't get DMCA reform. Videos are still getting unjustly removed and good channels are still getting suspended. And that was the whole purpose behind those videos. It was to fix the system. The system is clearly broken and we need to work together to get these problems fixed. Now I can show you how to beat Warner Music Group, but I can't do it alone. Here's the truth about videos on YouTube. They're literally dead within 48 hours, and I call it the 48 hour rule. Once a video is older than 48 hours, all the visibility for that video, like most viewed, top rated, most discussed, are removed and the video might as well be on your C drive, because virtually no one will really ever see it again after that. And here's a visual of the lifespan of videos here on YouTube. Now I need to clear one thing up right now. Some people have the ridiculous misconception that I make videos because I want attention. And if I was all about the views and subscribers, I would never have left my last channel to do this one. That channel at the time was the most subscribed in its genre and was gaining between 50 and 100 subscribers a day minimum. And would easily have been around 40 to 60 thousand subscribers right now had I continued making videos for it. So if I was simply about having subscribers and views, this was easily the dumbest way to go about that. I could make videos all day long about the Watchmen, Transformers, Terminator, and Star Trek and get hundreds of thousands of views, but I don't. Why? Because we're in a lot of trouble! And if we all ever want to sit back and really enjoy the music and arts again, we have work to do. I knew a lot of bad things were coming. The recession, the stock market collapse, the never ending war in Iraq, and the possibility of a new one in Iran or Afghanistan. I always knew these things were coming, but in 2007, I could see them coming from a mile away. And here I was talking about entertainment. I was becoming a distraction to the real news. I was just like all the other things keeping you from finding out the truth. So in early 2008, I made a video telling people why I was doing this channel and focusing on the news rather than entertainment. There is frankly no discussion about him online. There are no real entries and the old news stories are gone. He has seemingly vanished. All his old accounts are dead and no one knows what happened to him. So, in his memory, I shall go back to covering pop culture, as it seems like the only way to perhaps gain eyes on my political work. If I can use nostalgia like this and cover the issues affecting us today, while trying to warmly reminisce about the good old days, I shall do it. What Mr. Black and I agree are the most important things you take away is simply that they own us. They control our lives and not for the better. What I want you to know is that we are the backbone. Every one of us, we run this ship. Without us, they have nothing. They want us to hate and fear one another so they can play God. All we have to do is expose the truth by talking about it. We all have to get involved if we want to steer this ship in a better direction. Mr. Black tried to teach us to do that. I listened. Did you? Thanks for watching. We'll be back with more informative entertainment. And I was not a fan of Josh Hartnett at all. After movies like Pearl Harbor, 40 Days and 40 Nights, and one of the biggest flops in Hollywood history, Town and Country. I didn't know if he could ever crawl out of that trash. But after doing movies like Sin City, Lucky Number 11, and Resurrecting the Champ, it looks like he may be on his way to having a solid Hollywood career. I have no idea 
what made him make this movie two hours long. Usually comedies and horror movies try to clock in close to an hour and a half if they are pretty weak. And maybe they thought this movie was a little bit better than it actually was. You'll find that in the middle of the movie it does stall and sputter quite a bit. And it becomes a very basic run and hide horror movie. But of the positive things in the movie, it does have a few decent action scenes, and they do use some pretty cool camera angles in the movie. Unfortunately, this is a very small percentage of the movie, and after the initial hook, it becomes pretty much like all the others. The problem is that after the initial action and setup, the movie just drags on, and the characters really weren't that interesting. Now, I will say the ending was actually decent, nothing great, but not a total letdown either. So I will say they cut the movie down to about an hour and 20 minutes, it may have been a much better movie. The middle was just too bland and drawn out. It seemed like the whole thing they were using to make this movie unique was the fact that when the vampires bite you, they don't want to turn you. So they behead their victims, this way they won't become a vampire too. Now, this is okay, but it really wasn't a unique enough twist on the vampire genre to make a special movie about it. Overall, this movie does have some highs and lows, and unfortunately, too many lulls to make it a great time. But if you are a diehard vampire fan or horror fan, you may enjoy yourself. But for the rest of you, I'd probably say just rent it. From overall rating, I give 30 Days of Night two and a half stars. I have a message and an offer for Hollywood, and I really hope they take me up on it. Hire me to round up and kill every stupid character in horror movies so we never have to see them again. Believe me, this won't spoil this movie for you, but does there always have to be a stupid argument among people who are basically dead meat? Human nature is to bond when threatened by an outsider or an outside force, yet no one in Hollywood seems to figure this out. See War of the Worlds, Saw 2, Final Destination 3, and countless others for good examples of how people would not act if they were truly threatened by an outside force. And does there always have to be some moron who has to leave for no reason? You've just seen hundreds of people killed, and you're hiding and they haven't found you. And all of a sudden, you just gotta be someplace else. Give me a break. Please, anyone working on a horror movie or working on a horror script, email me and I'll help you get rid of these terrible horror cliches that are in your script or movie. Is there like one guy out there who has to write every horror script? And maybe this is like his little joke that he has the same moron in every movie. It's like it's his trademark. Is there part of the screenwriters or screen actors guild where this character must be in every horror movie? And let me try to describe this in a way that maybe you can understand, Hollywood. Let's say a ship wrecks, and there are a hundred people that fall in the ocean. And all but ten of them get eaten by sharks, and the remaining survivors are on a small rubber raft. So there are hundreds of sharks swimming around them, and you can see them because their fins are everywhere. So one of the ten people stands up and says, I can't take it anymore. i got to jump in the water. I just have to. And the others say, you can't. The sharks will eat you. No, no, I can't stay here, or I'll die here too. So Moron jumps in the water, and he gets eaten. How many times must we see this stupid character in these movies? Again, Hollywood, please contact me and hire me to kill this character off once and for all. He's killing our enjoyment of the movies you make, and I think this character's been around longer than that damn Energizer Bunny. <sighs> okay, I feel better now. You'll shoot your eye out, kid. Post your comments below on what you thought of this movie. If you'd like to rate and review a movie, you can do so at www.yourmovieratings.com. At this site, you can upload a video review or even a text review of any movie ever made. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be notified immediately when my latest movie review is uploaded. Also, if you'd like to see some of the latest info regarding my channel, then check out my website at mrblacksreviews.com. And if you made a cool video, or you want to share your YouTube channel with other members, then post them in the YouTube section. These forums are dedicated to everything from new movie releases to your very own YouTube channel. And don't forget, I'll be giving away DVDs at the forums, including the following titles. Transformers, Harry Potter, The Simpsons, Hot Fuzz, and four DVDs of the Movie 300. So join the forums for a chance to win any one of these DVDs. And finally, if you want to see my list of upcoming movie reviews, then just go to my forums and click on the calendar. This has all the movies that I'll be reviewing in the future. Thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you again next week.